Howdy folks, welcome back to Bullford 82. I have a project for my diesel truck that I'm working on here. Part of it involves that ZF5 we got going on back there. That'll be coming up in another video. We're gonna rebuild that one. Now it's gonna go behind my 4BT Cummins. Um, but what I'm doing with this truck is because it's lifted about 12 inches uh, over factory, um, I am in need of running a uh, different style of drive shaft. What I'm, uh, what I'm doing here is I'm going to build a transfer case that will allow me to use a front and rear double cardin or CV shaft or constant velocity uh, drive shaft. So my biggest thing right now is what I, what I want to do is explain to you guys what that means. Um, because I talk about it a lot, but I don't explain what I'm talking about. So I'm gonna use this old drive shaft from our junkyard truck as an example of what I'm talking about. On a normal truck that's not lifted, your U joints are gonna be pretty much parallel with your drive shaft and your uh, differential. They won't be at an angle. And if they are gonna be an angle, the other one up here should match that angle. So, for example, if you're like this, you want this one to basically be the same angle as that one to keep them in phase. So with a double carton U-joint, which I don't have one with me, but I can throw up a picture of it, what it's gonna do is it's gonna allow for me, let me grab another yoke here. We're going to use this end as a visual representation. So what's going to happen, a double cardin U-joint. So basically you've got two U-joints and it's, let's see, it's going to be like something like that. Yeah. So it'll allow a misalignment of your of your drive angle. So let's say I'm lifted, that's a pretty tall lift, but let's say I'm like that. Um, what that'll do is that'll allow the uh, U joints to be in phase right here. So this whole part here will turn at the same speed. Whereas if you just had this, let's say this is up, let's say these are literally mated together up at the transfer case and it's like that and your other joint down there is um, straight with the dry, uh, with the axle you're gonna get a pretty nasty vibration out of this and it will eat these uh, U-joints up so my problem is I'm lifted 12 inches um, and my drive shaft right now is kinda like this at that sort of that angle at the transfer case it's kinda matches this at the axle but um, that's not so good. My uh, front drive shaft is kind of like that, pretty much maxed out. Um, it's very noisy because of that um, that issue. So um, with the transfer cases that I picked up in Idaho, we got lucky because one that I grabbed completely random that was just sitting in the back of a, of a truck has a front yoke that will accept that double cardin joint. And then I have a Bronco transfer case that we're gonna be using parts from to build this, to build today's uh, transfer case. Um, it has a slip yoke, or a uh, uh, double cardin output, or a fixed yoke instead of a uh, slip yoke like this. So I hope that makes some sense. So you kinda of know what we're doing. Um, so basically, I'm going to have two brand new drive shafts, a you know, rebuilt transfer case, and we'll have a rebuilt transmission, new clutch and flywheel and all that stuff when it's all said and done. And hopefully no more driveline vibrations and so on and so forth. Now, the only snapping flyers that I have that actually work are these. I'm hoping those will work with the uh, circlip. So this one was behind the ZF5 that I picked up at the junkyard. Um, what I want to do with this one is get the fill plug 
out, get the drain plug out. This one has me a little worried because the fill plug is all the way in there and this drain plug is pretty well, pretty well um, trash. See how deep that is? And then this was just trash. Speedo sensor, let's get that out. I am missing one of these, but we'll have to... We'll hunt one down. Yeah, no more slip yoke. No more slip yoke for me. Take our little factory shaft seal. If you ever wonder what this is, this is on here from the factory, and it's just to, uh, <clears throat> so that they can fill these up with oil. And then that way when they get put in the vehicle, they're just ready to go. You don't have, you don't have to worry about anything. Uh, you can reuse these if you want to fill, do the same thing, fill it with oil before you put it in, but otherwise I fill them afterwards. There is a little ring right here. I'll take this little ring off here. This will hold this kind of holds our gear in. Starting to feel like <coughs> precision transmission here. Uh, let's see. The key with this is to not get so mad that you throw two holes across the shop. And it just snaps. Oh, yes. Oh. Oh. <sighs> okay. That was it, tubes. All right. What happened here? That right there.
it will uh, I think we're gonna use a different case now. So let's let's see. Wow, yeah, that's these are it. So let's see, how is this thing looking? This one's looking a little war. So I've got the selector from that Bronco transfer case. And it's in much better condition than this one here. We'll swap those out. It fits it, so we got that. Shift fork looks okay. Wow, I can actually take this apart properly without throwing my tools clear, clear across the room. Just coat that. And let's see. Harbor brick to the wind. GM performance. It's got some stuff on it, but it doesn't look too bad. And there's just silicone stuff in here. Filter's not fully plugged up with stuff. Hose is not damaged, so we can reuse that. Pull this off. This piece looks pretty good. And then shaft comes out. We can literally leave that all alone and just plop in our other shaft there. Oh yeah, I think I am gonna have to get a rebuild kit for this. Look at this. Those are, those are multi kit or uh, or we say screw that. <laughs> Bronco transfer case. Pays off again. So this is a good shift fork, but the insert's bad. Well, we'll go ahead and put this other uh, shift fork in there. So we don't have to buy parts. Yeah, these bearings feel really good. I'm We're, we're, we're doing a budget build, that is for sure. So this is a piece we want to make sure is not completely stripped out at all. And this one looks pretty good. Ah, oh, guys, the cats are killing me. Well, I told the guy at Napa that running out of brake clean is like running out of beer, and he uh, laughed and agreed with me. Um, I like this new jacket, but I really do not want to get it dirty, so I'm going to grab another jacket. In here, this looks pretty good. Okay. We got some pliers and we'll knock that thing off there.
And this has to fit in there precisely. Shift rod here after we want that on. Okay. And we're not going to have her be too totally dry. I don't think I'm going to bother fixing this. It's got a ways to go. Well, this transfer case is actually in pretty good shape. Pretty clean for the most part. You just see a little bit of you know, build up down there. It's probably never been apart before. So we got the pump in there, we got our new shaft. We're gonna put I'm gonna put some lube in here. Just so it glides like that. Um, this guy here, I want to wipe off. Let's make sure we don't have any dirt in there. This piece goes on there like that. We'll go ahead and put our shift fork back in there. Let's see, how did that go? Is that. Oh, you know what? Wrong way. Is it how it went? It will go on there. There we go. Now make sure that color's on there all the way. Okay, so one of these was no good. That was this one. This is going to go in here like that. So that way when you put it in, into four high or four low, this will shift into this and that engages the rest of the shaft to this, to the output. Well, that was just enough. Let's not forget our spring. Thing gets on there. Oh. It's 
So yeah, we've got double card. That's definitely a double carton. Just the way that mounts. Yeah, that's and then this one, I mean you can clearly tell these are way different. Yeah. There's a little rubber seal here. That needs to go in there. I'll just slam that in there. And with whatever battery we have left here. It's another day. I need to I need to clean this off real quick, like. Yeah, when I said this is a budget transfer case build, I meant it. All of our budget is pretty much just into buying transfer cases. And boy, I tell you what. Having the right snap ring pliers has really made me a happy person. In there, there we go. Ah, perfect. So this is why I have so many transfer cases. So this one, I don't know if you can tell, But it's getting just a little sharp. This one here is from that Bronco transfer case I bought many years ago, actually. Come on, focus. It's like brand new, basically. Speedo gear. It's gonna go on like that. And it slips over like that. All this double card and talk. And clicks in. There we go. So I got my favorite room temperature vulcanization cream, as a vice grip garage calls it, which I personally like to call it that. Anyway. I've been using this Permatex stuff uh, kind of by accident. One of my friends had bought it for uh, that yellow Dodge that I worked on, which we got a funny story about that. Um, but anyways, um, this stuff uh, is specifically made for transfer cases and it uh, has a feature that I like and it says that it resists uh, friction modifiers, which is what transmission fluid has in it, and that's what you have to run in these. So this is going to um, uh, hopefully help longevity with the seal. Because um, my other transfer case that's in the truck now is leaking. The seal looks okay. It's not totally worn. If we have to come back later and replace it, I will. do a final torque on all this um, after the RTV sets up a little bit. I did that with these. I'm gonna go back with the ratchet though and just give them one little, I'll do that off camera. And put a bead of silicone around this shaft here. And then that way when that slides on, that'll kind of loosen the threads and then I think there is a seal and some other stuff that goes here in the front, but we're gonna double up on her. I'm gonna have to clean the bench off. Our next video I'm gonna be doing is tearing down the AOD. I'm actually gonna do that here in a little bit. Um, Cause I need the uh, Speedo gear from the 
output on that. I'm hoping it's one of these because um, this one's kind of wore out. Well, I suppose the other transfer case has one. I don't know. I got I got parts to I got stuff to pick from. I'm just rambling now. Just rambling. Dead. <laughs> okay. Well, I mean, realistically, this transfer case is done. Get this thing set aside. Uh oh, we'll set that one aside because I actually that one I'm gonna do off camera. I'm not gonna bore you with that one. That one's for the junk air truck. I gotta swap the uh, output shaft and the tail housing, um, which I'll be pulling from that uh, transfer case. Um, but in upcoming videos, oh, here we are. It's got the Bronco output, and then the uh, I think this is an F250 or F350 uh, double carbon output. But that's definitely that's it. I keep questioning it, but it's this is a regular one right here. Let me get it like that. Double carbon usually longer, it has a different profile, it mounts differently. <clears throat> yeah. So with that, that'll fix some driveline problems. What? What are you? Alright Tubes, thanks for watching, we'll catch you next time.